Welcome everyone to the Cardano Effect podcast, episode 19. The purpose of this podcast is to take high level developer information and projects that are occurring within the Cardano space and break them down into bite-sized consumable pieces of information for everyday use. I'm your host, Philippe, and let's get this podcast started. So we have our three Cardano Effect hosts today, Sebastian, Rick, and myself. And we do have a special guest who Rick is going to be introducing in a little bit. And I wanted to thank everyone for the support. If you haven't subscribed to the Cardano Effect channel, please do so. Just click that subscribe button. That's all we're asking you to do. You come and watch the videos. If you're not subscribed, we want you to subscribe. We're trying to get our subscribers up to try to push the Cardano Effect to the top of the crypto pages. And anyone who's interested in Cardano in the future or blockchain or cryptocurrency in the future will be able to see the Cardano Effect podcast. That's our goal. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all the support. If you didn't see episode 18 last week, we had the Traxia guys, the Traxia and Lakeys guys over. And basically Traxia is an ERC-20 token that is looking to port to Cardano later on in this year with smart contracts. So that was a great episode. And we covered some news topics there as well. So if you're not familiar with what's been going on in the Cardano space, the Yoroi mobile wallet for Android has released. And I actually downloaded it on my phone. I have it. I actually sent some ADA from Datalist to Yodoi. It's very responsive. It's great. And apparently iOS is on its way. So Cardano is all about decreasing the barrier to entry and making it easier for people to get onboarded within the system. And this is the way to do it. So the Yodoi app, it looks beautiful. And I, I sent my little ADA from um, data list to Yodoi, and it's working perfectly. And Sebastian actually informed me that Yodoi was the number one free productivity app in Japan. I believe that was last week. And uh, right now it's number two. So it's very popular in Japan. And you can go ahead and get it at the Google Play Store. Please go download it, test it out, send some ADA. It's very quick, very responsive. So that's great. In other news, the ZK Snarks paper was released. Um, Charles tweeted about it earlier this week. So this is the ZK Snarks paper. And I am adding it to the legendary pile. So the pile is growing. So I just want to show everyone. Now it's on the top. So the pot stack of papers. So we're still waiting for papers from other projects so we can compare. But that's that. And then the last bit of news. So recently you see a, you see on Charles' Twitter that the Ender Protocol project chose. Um, Charles is working with the Endor Protocol team. He is the senior advisor over at that project. Now, what does that mean? That means he's advising the project. That's what other cryptocurrency CEOs do. They just don't advise their certain project. They branch out as well. Like Vitalik, he does, I believe, Omise Go and plenty of other projects he advises. And that works in the crypto world and in the current enterprise world. So you have Google CEOs advising other projects. You have Apple CEOs advising other projects. It doesn't mean he's leaving the project. It just means he's advising. This is how you network. This is how you build friendships. This is how you build relationships. This is how you move the project forward. These 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 strategic partnerships are are critical. So before you when you hear a story within the Cardano sphere, you just you have to take a second and you just have to breathe, interpret the data, read the sources, check in with other people. And don't spread FUD. He's not leaving Cardano. Not at all. So that's that. And I just wanted to thank everyone for all the critique. We we take it with stride. The more positive the critique is, I think the more receptive we are to learn and incorporate that within our episode. We have timestamps now. We have the Cardano clips. It's a separate channel for those who don't want to listen to an hour-long podcast or greater. You can listen to little snippets over there. So we are trying to move forward in a healthy and productive manner, saying things like, the podcast sucks, or I don't want to hear you right now. That's negative criticism. Why don't you, you need to re-spin it and make it positive so we can incorporate that into our episode. It takes a lot of work to make this episode. I was thinking about doing the behind the scenes and not time-lapsing it to show you exactly how much work this takes. I mean, Sebastian works at Emergo, but Rick and I, we have regular jobs, and we are putting as much energy to make this as great as possible for everyone. And we want to improve, but positive criticism is really what we're trying to get. So that being said, none of what we say on this podcast is financial advice. 
you are your best financial advisor. And if you don't think you are, find someone who's qualified to do so. We're just a few guys talking about Cardano. We are very passionate about this project. So without further ado, Rick, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, Philippe. Thank you for introducing the podcast. And I appreciate uh, you bringing everything on here. Philippe already covered the news for today. Um, also, thanks for pointing out about good feedback. We are getting good feedback. What really helps is actionable feedback where um, it's okay if it sounds kind of negative, but as long as it's something we can action, take for action. Uh, if you tell me the podcast is boring, uh, it's hard to define what that means. But if you tell me what you would like to see, now that is something that's actionable. So, um, but thank you for all the feedback we've gotten. Also, I'm really excited to hear about the advancements in Uroi. I like you, Roy, a lot. I use an iPhone. Looking forward to see you coming on. And of questions that I often get in the tech support and on Telegram is, can or will will you be able to stake from your Roy? And the answer is yes. You will be able to stake from your Roy when it comes out. Once those developments are made, it won't be right of way. But as developments are made, you'll be able to stake from your Roy. Now, instead of covering any other news. What I'm going to do is let people know, in case you're new to the podcast, where can you get your news? Now, you can get the roadmap from cardanoroadmap.com. Roadmap updates once a month. It's very thorough, and uh, it's usually around the beginning of the month. Uh, for example, it updates tomorrow in about a day, day and a half is the next update on roadmap, cardanoroadmap.com. It has lots of their information, and if you want periodic updates, the best place to get those periodic updates is on Twitter from emergo.io on Twitter and at Cardano on Twitter. That's where you can get you know high speed updates. And if you want real time interaction, we have Telegram is now renamed at Cardano official. So Cardano General is now Cardano official. And you can go on there and ask us questions. Philippe and I are on there often. Philippe has a channel called Cardano is Coming, which is really a up and coming channel. I mean, it's doing great over there. So feel free to jump in on Telegram and ask us questions in real time. There's lots of people there, hundreds and thousands, actually well over 6,000 people who can answer your questions or engage in conversation. All right, so on to our special guest, Mr. Shinsuke Murasaki. He goes by Murasaki. He is the Senior Manager of Business Development at Emergo. And some of his bio off of the Emergo.io webpage is uh, Shinsuke Murasaki has seven years of experience working in Asian markets, specializing in business to business overseas sales. So lots of experience there. A special, uh, currently, he is working on business development at Emergo in the Southeast Asian sector. He has rhythm and shows it by playing El Cerrado, which I don't know what that is. It's a West, Afri West African instrument. And Shinsuke also loves fish and is a master spear fisher. That's pretty cool. I like that. So, uh, Murasaki, welcome to the program. How are you doing today, sir? And where are you calling in from? Um. Thank you very much for uh, inviting this uh, amazing podcast today. Um, today I'm in Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, this week I'm going to spend the whole week in Indonesia. I work with uh, Emago Indonesian team and I'm going to visit a couple university for uh, education area. All right, so you're on travel a lot because you're kind of based out of the Osaka area, is that correct? Uh, so when I joined the company, uh, I was I was in Osaka. I lived in Osaka, but uh, as the company migrated its head for headquarter function to Tokyo, I moved myself to Tokyo, and I currently live in Tokyo. All right. So now you're traveling a lot because that's what business development requires a lot of travel. And so, uh, in the big scheme of things, in the big picture, you know. What is business development? And if you don't mind, Philippe has a great question. He likes to ask. Uh, what is it like a day in the life of business development or what is it like a day in the life of for murasaki is that right philippe is that how we do it 100 percent. yes what is a day in the life of murasaki how 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 does your day start how does it end so um, i yeah i think that's a really good question um so my day starts uh i wake up and i reach myself to my two mobiles and i check all the messenger slack and the emails and just check uh what like figure out what i have to do for that day 
and then just go to the office uh, and I have, have a couple meetings. Uh, and so basically, uh, I think to back to the initial question, uh, what is business development? I think it's all about uh, connecting dots. Uh, I think one of the example is ADA crypto card that happened in Korea. So we knew that uh, ADA holder wanted to use ADA in uh, in some ways, but there were there wasn't any way to use ADA except sending ADA or buying ADA on crypto exchange. But we knew that Metaps Plus had a payment network in Korea, so we kind of connected like ADA holders' desire to the actual use case in Korea. Uh, so to me, business development is uh, finding the opportunity and connecting dots of uh, people and the stakeholder involved. That was a great response. Thank you, thank you. Um, so speaking on this MetApps relationship and this MetApps, this MetApps project that Emergo has been working on, I read mm. somewhere that the card is available. You can spend it at around 33,000 stores in South Korea, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And you offer a, a, um, a physical card version and a mobile version. So um, the interest from Cardano holders or ADA holders and ADA spenders in South Korea, has it been the physical card or has it been more of the digital experience? So, uh Amago and Metaps started with a physical card, which is a crypto card. And the second version was the mobile card inside of a mobile application that subsidiary of Metaps Plus provides. So right now, uh, the tendency is moving towards to a digital card because in digital, digital card, you can convert ADA into some other uh, cryptocurrency that they are using. And also, uh, you can have a multiple design of uh, cars if, because it's a digital, it's not physical. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds great. I think here in the United States and outside, we're waiting. We're waiting for a card. I'm waiting for a card. Rick is waiting for a card. Sebastian, have you have you seen the card? Have you used the card? Um, I don't know if you've traveled to South Korea and what's your experience with it? Yeah, I haven't. Uh use the card because I, I don't live in South Korea and I haven't been to South Korea since we launched the card, unfortunately. Uh, but I have seen the card. I have touched the card. Uh, so I, I, I can attest that it, it is a great card. No, but if, if, if you're watching this podcast, you want to know what this, this ma magical card looks like. If you just look up on Twitter, we have a hashtag. I think it's, uh, do you remember what, what it is? Misaki? It's like Ada crypto card. Uh, a Ada Metap Squad. Yeah, so, so something like that. If you search that on, on Twitter with a hashtag, uh, you'll see a bunch of pictures of, of people posting the pictures of their card. And so you can see it from many different angles. And we also have a video on our YouTube channel where you can see uh, one of our employees, Kyle, using it in, in different stores to show like the demo of how it works. And so it's, that, it's not just like we're claiming it's reusable in stores. You can actually see a video of us uh, using it in different stores. And we had a few community members also come out to help us with that video. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I wanna segue back to what happened last week. So both of you were at the Japan Blockchain Conference, is that correct? Um, what was going on there? What was Emergo's, what was Emergo doing at that conference? Yeah, I can answer that. So the Japan Blockchain Conference is I believe the largest uh, blockchain conference in Japan. And because we're based so close to the location of the event, it just makes sense for us to go uh, just as a community outreach uh, event. And so while we were there, we had many different ways to reach out to new people and, and ask them to join our ecosystem. So we would ask them to follow us on Twitter, ask them to sign up to our newsletter, follow us on YouTube. We had various prizes if you followed us. So for example, if you follow us on Twitter, you get one of the stickers. So you may have seen on our Twitter, Mergo IO, we had a bunch of stickers of Yoroi sticker, Mergo sticker, a bunch of different stuff. And if you followed us on Twitter, you get to pick some stickers. If you followed us on Twitter and our newsletter, then you got an ADA bag. So you might have seen a picture on Twitter also. It's an actual like a bag that says be the next ADA holder on it. So 
you can be an ADA bag holder. And uh, the idea of that campaign was uh, people would hold the bags as they walk around the conference. And that was pretty successful. You could see people walk around the conference everywhere with their ADA bag. So it was a very successful campaign. We got a very strong uh, number of uh, newsletter signups, Twitter followers, and everything. So if you saw our numbers on social media, like a jump, uh, that's that's people coming to our booth and talking to us about Cardano and about Emergo. So I think it was a very successful event from a consumer outreach perspective. But also, it's, we're a distributed company. So it's also always useful to have an excuse to all get together and have some of those discussions that are best done in person. So just from a business side, uh, it was also very successful. A lot of really productive meetings uh, happened. And so it's uh, you know always great to get together, plan ahead what you're going to do for the next few months, and then start executing. So yeah, just overall, it was very good. I was wondering, uh, do you know, uh, do you know uh, kind of going back to what uh, the MADAPS card, how does that work technolo technology-wise? Um, I know you mentioned earlier, you, you use this card to purchase a convert it to a native cryptocurrency. And I guess, uh, how do you know what the price of an, a, an item is? Like, I did not see the demo videos. I'm going to look those up when we're done here. But if there's 30,000 different stores and I want to purchase an item, is there a way I can tell how much that item costs in ADA? And then I click some buttons and I send it. And I somehow I know how much it costs. How does that work? So uh, when you go to merchants and you let's say you want to buy a bottle of water, so your understanding of price will be in Korean won, and equivalent amount of ADA uh, will be deducted from your escrow account where you put your ADA in, and also the the rate between Korean won and, and ADA will be uh, is provided by Metaps Plus because they have a cryptocurrency exchange. That's how it works. Ah, I see. That sounds rather simple. So the Metaps app itself, like say it's on the phone or something like that, and they use the card to authorize the transaction, but it'll tell you how much it actually costs on the phone or something like that on the app? Uh, so the expression, explanation that I made right now was the, uh, the when you purchase something with ADA card, the physical card, uh, but the the say, the idea of transaction is pretty much the same, uh, even when you spend your uh, ADA from a mobile version as well. Oh, so the physical card they can actually swipe it. Yeah. Ah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, cool. Thank you. So when we went to Korea, uh, just to have an interview, we we bought ourselves a uh, bottle of water because uh, Metaps Plus guys offered us uh, one card. Uh, that has been KYC under their account. So we experienced uh, shopping experience with using ADA crypto card. So they, uh, we present the card to merchants and the merchants process with their uh, uh, shopping uh, system. And uh, so the, they, the merchant is going to get Korea one uh, from payment provider and uh, ADA will be uh, we'll be going to the cryptocurrency exchange because the cryptocurrency exchange is going to convert our uh, ADA into uh, fiat, which is Korean one. Okay, cool. Was it rel was it relatively fast? Like the transaction time, they didn't have to wait very long. Yeah, we didn't wait at all. We it's it's just pretty much the same like a normal shopping experience with fiat. Oh wow! Just swipe and boom, done. Yeah, cool. Right on. That's awesome, that's awesome. So I wanna to segue to where you are now in the world. And um, one of the tenants behind Cardano is going after the unbanked population. And those are usually found in developing countries. Right now you're in Indonesia. Could you elaborate what is the mission in Indonesia right now? I know a few months ago on the roadmap, it said that um, Emergo was working with uh, Hiro uh, which was a line of grocery stores, and I believe it was an, there was an IKEA there as well. Is it a similar? Is it a similar objective as to the Meta Apps card? You're providing solutions to transact ADA, or are you going a little deeper in providing supply chain logistics and different use cases for smart contracts? How how deep are you going in in in, in Indonesia? So right now uh, in Indonesia, uh, Emago Indonesia is uh, focusing on providing uh, education to universities uh, because uh, without uh, blockchain education, there won't be any 
project or product will be born. And in Indonesia, uh, it's still, uh, I think it's still considered as emerging country, but uh, it's quite surprising that uh, Indonesia already has four unicorn companies, uh, Gojek, Abdukala uh, Park, uh, Tokopedia. Uh, it's, it's amazing that like there's already four unicorn companies while Japan only have one unicorn company. So we believe that uh, in the in the long term, with a proper education, I think this country has a, a tremendous opportunity to solve our country's problem with technology. So to answer your question, the focus right now uh, for Imago Indonesia is providing blockchain education to university, university and uh, education platform. Okay, I think that's very important. Um, the Cardano, Cardano as a whole, they focus a lot on education, whether that's in Africa or in, in, in Indonesia. And I think that's important to build up, build up the ecosystem because just throwing the Cardano brand out there without telling anyone how to use it or what to do with it, it's only gonna lead to, I don't know, short-term short -term solutions, but you're looking for more long-term solutions, if I'm not correct. Um, and I think that's very important. I think that's very important. Rick, I mean, what do you think about that as far as just going after that education and um, working with developing nations and making sure that the infrastructure is correct from the bottom up? Thanks for asking me. I was like jumping out of my seat thinking, wow, okay, it's brilliant. So we had Dan here from IOHK a while back and they're training in Rwanda and parts of Africa. And so you're getting training going on in Indonesia so they can organically create their own products, you, writing the software to create the products they need to solve the problems. And what I'm learning from this is you can't just write code, like we can't write the code in the United States or write the code in Japan or in Europe and say, here you go, Indonesia, here is a solution to a problem we have solved. Here's the software, now it'll solve all your problems. It just doesn't seem to work that way. It seems to me like the, the approach that's being taken is awesome because they need to solve their problems with their software because they know what it is. It, it's different than what we have in, in the United States. We have different issues trying to be solved than that. So uh, th that's what I'm reading from this is that you have to train the people who are dealing with that economy and that local uh, economy, you know, basically, and have them write the software to solve the problem. Is that the is that correct? Is that what the approach is, basically? Yes, um, I yeah, that's the approach uh, that Imago is taking, and uh, I personally got quite inspired by uh, one of Charles mentioned uh, about Africa. It, that's exactly what you said. So you you can just import your product to some other country and say hey just use this product this is going to solve your problem it just doesn't work in that way so in the country's problem the experts are the citizen of that country they they know the problem pretty well so the problem has to be solved by themselves and for that the education is necessary so that they can come up with some solution i think that was a great response great response and um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this how this presents solutions in the future. And like everyone was saying, every community has different problems that they are facing, and the only people that know it best are the locals that are actually living in that environment. I mean, even Rick and I, we both live in the states, but I have different problems in my state than he has in his state, and that's why there's laws and regulations that differ from state to state in the United States. So. On a country level, there's a plethora of different people um, and they're speaking different languages, they're from different cultures and they have to figure out what problems they wanna solve and you just are providing the tools and everything will lay itself out like that. So I think that's great. So I also wanted to just briefly switch topics to um, the partnership announcement um, on January 31st this year where Emergo made a strategic investment into the leading digital merchant bank, Y2X. 
And people were asking about that in Telegram. And every time a partnership or a word is mentioned with association with Cardano, um, everyone puts on their um, CSI goggles and tries to figure out everything that's going on. So they want to know what exactly is Y2X and what exactly is the nature of the partnership between Emergo and Y2X? So uh, the partnership with, uh, with Y2X, uh, so the full detail is available in Emergo's website uh, with the formal press release. So uh, if uh, people want to learn in details, I recommend to go to the website. But the uh, uh, quick overview about the partnership itself is uh, Y2X is a digital bank uh, and uh, Y2X is uh, going to adopt Cardano protocol uh, for the company that they're going to work with. Uh, so uh, that's really amazing news for us and I think the uh, whole, com whole Cardano community, I guess. So this isn't like a direct to the person, like person to person, business thing. This is a big picture business thing. Y2X is a bank, a digital bank, right? That's what you're saying. Hey, I've got a question, a little bit of a tangent. Have you guys heard in the last couple of days that some cryptocurrency company, the boss died and there's $180 million worth of Bitcoin got locked up? Have you heard about that? Is that true? Yeah, that's Rick. the uh, largest exchange in, in Canada. I'm not from Canada. I know a few people that have their funds locked up right now. Uh, behind a white page with black text telling them that their funds are no longer accessible. I, wow. I've heard otherwise, as of recently, that this may be a hoax and the guy did not pass away and the funds are on the move. So, you know, crypto is a wild west. So, I don't know, $190 million, that seems like it could be one of those um, those crime documentaries later in life that someone's going to find a new identity. But if that's not the case, I, I'm 100% I'm sorry, but you know how um, news floats around. It's hard to verify. It, the story seemed a little bit fishy to start off with, that one guy held the private keys for the mm -hmm. entire exchange, but who knows? That's what I thought too. And the only reason I brought it up is because I had several people message me and say, hey, did you hear about this lockup? And I thought, doesn't multi-signature solve that problem? Like if three out of five people say, yes, this is an authorized transaction, it can go. That way, if any, if you lose any one person, you don't lose all the funds. And the first thing I thought is, oh, that sounds like a hoax. Now, not to distract from the Y2X thing, but basically Y2X is a digital bank, and I'm assuming they have all kinds of, they'll have protections in place and procedures in place to protect people's funds. And if you need like vault services for large amounts of cryptocurrencies, is that what Y2X does? Like if, if you have a very large quantity or you're using it as a commodity, uh, I don't, I'm trying to understand what they do. Do you know what they do? Or is, can you tell us about that, Murasaki? So uh, this, this like strategic investment was made by uh, investment department of Hamago. And I, I am obviously coming from a uh, business development and, and I wasn't involved in the whole process. So I'm probably not the right person to talk about this in details. So, uh, but I, I had a discussion. I, I had a, I had a chat with a CIO, and I, th I guess the idea is uh, Y2X is going to adopt Cardano protocol uh, for the company that would like to issue security token, uh, and uh, for the SDO, uh, the Cardano protocol uh, will be used uh, when the Cardano computation layer will be ready. So I think that's the brief overview of what Y2X is going to do with utilizing Cardano blockchain. Okay, that's perfect. That made it nice and simple. And uh, I didn't mean to dig too far into the details because I know some business arrangements, you don't really want to go into the, the fine details because of the partnerships and the way that works. So Philippe, are we ready to go to the Reddit questions? Yes, we are definitely ready to go to the Reddit questions. So uh, the first Reddit question comes from Johnny J Jr. and he asks, can you expand on the timeline and future expansion plans for use of prepaid Cardano debit card, subject we were just talking about similar to uh, Madex. Mm -hmm. Specifically, is it something that will potentially be available in the United States or are there regulatory hurdles that would have to be addressed? Um, yeah, uh, I think this is a really good question. Uh, so we received very positive feedback from Ada Cardano fans in Korea. Uh, for this uh, first initiative in partnership with Meta Plus. 
So Imago and Meta Plus really drove and executed the first use case, uh, which allowed the user to basically pay with ADA in their daily life. And we had many, many uh, requests from uh, overall users. They would like to expand the same concept in their locations. Uh, but as this uh, uh, person says, uh, uh, as, a co as a commercial entity of Cardano, uh, the uh, Imago would like to uh, work in this direction and provide similar experience in more countries. But uh, this will take some time since uh, we will take we will have to operate within a clear regulatory framework and we have to find uh, and work with local partners and finally scale up the program locally as well. So Imago will uh, hopefully uh, let community know if we were to release ADA payment card in other countries. But in the meantime, we would like to uh, welcome potential partners uh, in all over the world. Uh, if there's a partners, uh, please reach out to us. That sounds good. That sounds good. And when they come to the States, um, I hope that Rick gets the first card and we have to do some video of him getting a taco. And that <laughs> is going to be necessary. When taco, Rick, you're going to be the first person in the US to use it and the first person to get a taco. Absolutely. If I get the chance, I'm going to South Korea just so I can buy that taco. <laughs> I'm on that. And, you know, it's in like Murasaki said, you know, if someone's looking for a partnership, reach out to them. Adibergo underscore IO on Twitter and Emergo.io on the webpage. Okay. So next question is from Johnny J Jr. again. And it says that at one point, there seems to be quite a bit of interest in ADA being used as a collateral for loans by Nexo.io, but that hasn't materialized to date, unfortunately. I realize ADA being an option on the Nexo platform is outside of Cardano's direct control. Is there interest in Cardano seeing such a relationship develop since it would be a great way to further encourage people to stay invested in Cardano long term? Of course, such an arrangement will need to allow for ADA coins used as collateral to still be staked. So I'm not familiar with the Nexo platform, but I, I don't know if you can answer this question. Okay, uh, I'm I'm also not that familiar with Nexo platform. Uh, however, uh, I understood this question as, uh, would Emago be interested in partner, partnering with crypto-based loan service like this Nexo platform? I think that's the summary of this question. Uh, and in that case, I would like to answer, although I don't know much about this service, but it seems like this is one of the ways for ADA holder to utilize their ADA. Uh, and we would like to have a good, we, we would like to have look into this uh, Nexo platform uh, in details uh, and would like to take into consideration. So uh, if this uh, person making a question have information, uh, I would be I'll be very happy to discuss uh, with you or get more information from this person. Another hand uh, hand reaching out saying, "Hey, talk to me." And you know, um, Dan Friedman when he was on did this very similar. He said, "Hey, if someone out there has good ideas, get a hold of me." Sebastian, you were saying? Yeah, I I think we used to get uh, too many questions, or at least I used to. Uh, the first one is, "How do I build it?" And like, "How do I integrate Cardano?" And the second one is when is Shelly released? Because I want to release as soon as Shelly launches. And now we have a, a lot of tools for the platform mostly available through the Cardano CLI and the Rust code base. So I don't get as many how do I do it question anymore because now if, if you look up their tools available, now the number one question I get is just, I'm, I'm waiting to launch for Shelly. Can you give me a date and I'll, I'll be sure to launch right at that time. So I, I think uh, probably once we get to the Shelly release, as soon as that happens, a lot of people will kind of like a pour in and so okay now it's decentralized i feel comfortable running my uh lending platform or whatnot on on cardano and so i think a lot of these partnerships are are waiting on that and so obviously shelly is coming fairly soon so uh, even at emergo we're already starting for you know, working on the staking feature for for shelly so everything is like a uh, getting in place uh but you know i, I Shelly gets closer, we're going to be, you know, recontacting these people who have, have reached out to us and say like, hey, you know, you, you reached out to us for your learning platform or whatnot. I don't know about this company, 
for example, if somebody reached out to us for a link platform, and now we can come back to, say, to them and say, hey, Shelly's coming out, you know, at this point, are you ready to launch? And so we should see a lot of stuff coming out. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks for expanding on that because a lot of people are interested in, you know, how's, when is Cardano be, going to become implemented on these other platforms and that people would like to see it expand. I think we answered uh, Johnny J. Jr.'s questions as best as possible. Thank you, Johnny, for those inputs. Very good. The next question comes from Pop Tarts for You. I like that username, Pop Tarts for You. And they ask, Will Eroi interact with websites similar to how MetaMask on Ethereum currently works? Or do you see a different future for Eroi? Uh, so, no, Eroi will not be MetaMask like. It will always be its own separate tab. Uh, we believe that was important for a few different reasons, including privacy. Uh, but we will have a MetaMask-like platform for Cardano. But these are independent, right? So people don't use MetaMask as a wallet for like a cold storage. People don't use MetaMask as a wallet for financial transactions. People use MetaMask as a way to interact with, you know, small games on Ethereum network or other such dApps. And so we thought it was important to have uh, two different basically platforms within our, our ecosystem that are available on the browser, one of which will be a MetaMask-like system that will come out in the future, uh, but Yoroi will be a kind of an independent wallet uh, that runs in your browser or on your phone uh, that will be your gateway to the financial world and can also act as your cold wallet and all these other kinds of stuff uh, that a, a platform like MetaMask is not particularly well suited for. That sounds good. That sounds good. I think that's a good, concise answer for that question. Um, moving on. So thanks, you Pop-Tarts for you. The next question we have is from Pi Roberts and it says, what do you see as the short-term and long-term goals regarding business development? And great job with the podcast, gentlemen. Thank you. We appreciate that. So short and long-term goals for business development. I guess I get, this is also a very, very good question. Um, so to answer this question, so Amago's commercial activity will go hand in hand with the development of the Cardano platform itself. So for the short-term goal, Amago is and will continue to focus on projects that utilize uh, the settlement layer, such as the uh, MetaPS Plus Crypto Card Initiative, uh, and also uh, work with partners that are committed to adopting the Cardano platform when the computation layer will be ready. I, I guess that's the summary for our short-term activity uh, in terms of business development. And as far as uh, the long-term goals go, uh, so Imago's goal is to drive the adoption of Cardano. So we like to drive the adoption of Cardano platform to enterprise level, such as uh, global logistic companies or some financial institute uh, leveraging the computation layer and building product and so on. So for that, uh, for that to happen, our and our and team is building services around Cardano, such as uh, Uri Wallet, uh, Sebastian explained uh, before. And also uh, the consulting team is working with company that would migrate to Cardano when the CL will be ready. So that's, I, I, get, I hope that explains the difference between uh, short term and long term. No, that does, certainly does. Thank you for clarifying that. And that's something we always like to touch on is in the big picture, you know, what is the company doing? So thank you for that. And the next question comes from Sir Lucius Leftfoot. That's an old English sounding name there. Sir Lucius Leftfoot asks, now there's five questions here and we'll, we'll parse through them one at a time. The first one is, will ADA be made available, available through ATMs or kiosks? and when so atms or kiosks and mm -hmm. i guess where um i think japan already started to touch on it but what's your take on that uh so will, will ada be made available i think so i think uh this is related to mass adoption and this is something we are waiting for uh, like including community at large and at Imago, uh, most specifically, we work every day towards this goal. I mean, the mass adoption. So we will consider such project when mass adoption reaches uh, more 
advanced uh, level, uh, which will naturally come in parallel to the release of the Cardano protocol plan throughout 2017. I, I would like to add that also, I know there was like a photo uh, floating around with like ADA on, a, on an ATM um, a while ago. I think that was probably over a year ago. And I think that's what stirred the curiosity within the community. Mm -hmm. But I'd also like to add that uh, Emergo, you know, Emergo, IOHK, and the Cardano Foundation, they're not an ATM company. So they have to produce the tech to create ADA and make sure that it's it's navigating towards its smart contracts, it's staking. But at the end of the day, it's on the ATM company to adopt the technology within their machines. You can't go to like Bank of America or Chase Bank in the United States and just put a cryptocurrency on the ATM. Regulation has to be there. And the ATM company themselves or the banking company behind that ATM has to want to put that cryptocurrency on there. So I think, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that's how it works in Japan as well. So um, yeah. Yeah, who needs banks anyway? We're gonna bypass them with crypto. I saw the funniest thing on Twitter. I think it was on the Ethereum Classic Twitter and uh, or they retweeted it and they said, I know we're trying to bank the unbanked, but let's try unbanking the banked. I thought that was hilarious. So <laughs> let's go to uh, the second question from Sir Lucius Leftfoot, and that is, what is the plan for finding partners or solutions which enable people to purchase ADA with fiat currency on their smartphones? Ooh, high tech question, good questions. I'm not sure if this answer is properly to this question, but in fact, where I am in Indonesia, uh, you can purchase, uh, Indonesian citizen can purchase ADA using fiat, uh, local currency, Indonesian rupiah with smartphone, because one of the exchanges that uh, list ADA in this country uh, provides a smartphone application that enable people to buy cryptocurrency. So if the question is in that sense, there's already a cryptocurrency exchange that uh, provides such services. Uh, but we like to, uh, we're looking to have more partners, uh, exchange partners that provides uh, mobile mobile application to buy uh, ADA. So if there's exchange that's interested in uh, listing ADA, uh, please uh, get in touch with me. All right, that sounds good. And you know, it's almost it almost begs the question with countries like Indonesia and South Korea getting involved with the transfer of ADA at the smartphone and at the credit card or debit card level. It makes me wonder, okay, well, what's stopping us from doing this in the United States? And the only answer I can think of is regulations. Um, I don't know what the right answer is, but that's what I'm thinking. Let's go to question number three. Uh, that was, um, why would the average citizen in a developing country want to use ADA in 2021 over Bitcoin or a stable coin? So that's kind of a speculative, speculative question there, but why would the average citizen in a developing country want to use ADA? So I think uh, in case of Cardano, I, I think uh, one major feature of Cardano is interoperability. So we believe that the average student uh, of a developing country probably will not be, uh, will not even know that they are using ADA uh, after 2020 because Cardano blockchain will be connected to multiple blockchain uh, and a multiple currency. Uh, so uh, the back to the question, why would the average citizen in a developing country want to use ADA in 20, uh, after 2020 uh, over Bitcoin or a stable coin will be uh, hopefully uh, the interoperability feature will connect uh, as many as blockchain. Uh, then the, there will be a seamless, the, the Cardano will be able to uh, provide seamless experience in converting currency to currencies. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I see, uh, the Cardano interoperability feature. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense because Cardano is interoperable with other coins. This is referring specifically to the currency ADA. It doesn't have to be ADA. It can be any currency. It would just, Cardano would be the network 
that allows the transaction to take place. But excellent answer for question three. I think that would make Mr. Sir Lucius Leftfoot happy. I hope so. Question four is, how do you plan to convince financial institutions to create custody solutions for ADA? I believe that the custody solution will be something that uh, the market will demand. And also as the industry grows, uh, the significance of uh, custody service will also increase. Uh, so for this question, I think that uh, partnering with companies that actually going to use custody service from the nature of that of their business is quite important. So uh, I think for that, the partner with uh, Y2X uh, that we announced uh, last month uh, could be a really great first step for that because uh, the Y2X is uh, is a company that uh, that would use uh, custody solutions. Okay, that makes sense. That goes back to the Y2X. All right. Awesome. Thank you for that. And the last question here is from uh, Solutions Left Foot is, what industry is most likely to drive major adoption of Cardano? For example, online games, gambling, et cetera. I want to take a guess at that one. My guess is gambling. Although, what's your take on that, Murasaki? Uh, great question again. Uh, so we have our focus industries uh, clearly laid out in our website. Uh, there are four verticals. They are retail, uh, logistics, uh, healthcare, and finance. So those four uh, areas are the uh, our focus right now, and we believe those. We believe in those four because we believe that those four will drive major adoption of Cardano. And for the finance area, there's already something going on. Uh, repeating again, but we already invested in Y2X and also uh, ADA crypto card can be considered as some initiative in our finance area, I, I suppose. And also we can't disclose so much right now, but Emago is working with uh, uh, working in logistic area as well. So uh, please follow our social media so that you will be the first person who can get the uh, the updated information about this. That sounds good. That was a great answer. Thank you. Thank you. And I would also like to add that we, what we were talking about before in sense that Cardano is being built, but these solutions are not present right now. And it's going to be on the broader community as a whole to create solutions in certain industries that not Emergo will never think of, or IOHK will never think of, or the Cardano Foundation will never think of. There are going to be innovative ideas that 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 may drive cryptocurrency in the next year that people are just not aware of. But it's just about putting yourself in the correct position to build the railroad tracks to allow these companies to thrive. So with that being said, thank you for that question, those series of questions for Sir uh, Lucius Left Foot. The next uh, set of questions comes from TAP21X. And um, the first question that TAP21X has is, does Mr. Murasaki know of any cool dApps being developed by any groups in Japan that will be ready when the computation layer launches? And I'm assuming that if he did, he probably couldn't speak on that partnership. But um, you can let us know. OK, um, so. Specifically for Japan, uh, because we are based in Japan, uh, even myself, like who is doing business development, has a chance to talk to developers. Uh, but unfortunately, we are not able to discuss anything publicly just yet. Uh, so please follow our social media uh, so that uh, when we have a news, uh, we definitely, our marketing team will definitely uh, going to uh, post uh, Twitter or uh, Facebook post uh, regarding this uh, type of news. So uh, again, uh, please uh, please follow our uh, social media. Sounds good. Sounds good. Great, uh, great response. And the second question is, what is the current mood of the initial Japanese investors in Cardano? Are they anxious? Are they pleased? Are they optimistic? So back to the conversation of uh, JBC, we have uh, many chance to uh, talk with uh, Cardano fans and some of the initial uh, investor of Cardano. And uh, 
the response from them, I think the vast majority is excited about the overall development of Cardano, specifically uh, the upcoming uh, staking. And also, uh, uh, as far as Imago goes, uh, there's a huge response uh, from the community member uh, and excitement for Yoroi wallet because Yoroi has been developed quite rapidly, uh, like uh, hardware wallet integration and also the Android application that was introduced earlier in this podcast. So to conclude, what was the general uh, impression and uh, mood from those community members? I think they are most, mostly excited. Yeah, one thing I want to add to that is I think uh, because of the language barrier, people in the United States uh, may not quite realize, but actually for Yoroi, something around 50% of our users are Japanese. So we get a huge amount of people signing up from Japan. And, you know, when we were at the conference, just the amount of number of people that come to us at our booth and go like, oh, man, I love Yoroi. I'm using it. I'm telling all my friends to use it. It's just really encouraging. So I think because of the language barrier, people think it, it's just, you know, people in America using it maybe, but it, there's a huge uh, number of people in Japan uh, that are using Yodoi and they're looking forward to everything else that Emergo can build for them. So it was the number one free productivity app for reasons. People are actually using it in Japan. People are using it in the States. People are very excited about it. So that's wonderful to hear. Wonderful to hear. Okay, so the next question is, how did Cardano end up settling on Japan as the home base for the ICO? Obviously, the regu regulatory infrastructure was deemed to be more predictable, beneficial than other candidate jurisdictions. But what led Cardano to look into Japan in the first place? Uh, Mr. Murasaki, if you have a quick response about that. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, everyone probably wonder why, why in Japan. Um, so I think it's also a really good question. Uh, to answer the question, uh, uh, I wasn't really involved in this process back then because I just joined the company August 2017, uh, right after uh, this uh, ICO. But as far as I know, the favor of business environment and expertise of local members and partners, as well as the support of the government and local institution made Japan an ideal place to uh, for a project to kick off. That's, uh, that's, that's something that I know. That sounds good, sounds good. So the last question from Tap21X is, what will the main sources of revenue be for Emergo in one year, five years, and 10 years? Okay, uh, so I think that's related to quite related to BizDev. Um, so uh, Imago has four business units, uh, and uh, so number one is a, a system development, and number two education, and number three in investment acceleration program, and number four advisory. So we pretty much working in this sequence. Uh, so uh, to answer this question, uh, so one year, five year, and ten years, uh, I think we we will follow this uh, prioritization of uh, business units uh, even now and even like ten years later as well. Uh, so the focus and the main source of revenue for Emago uh, will also be in the same sequence. Uh, Number one, we focus on system development, and number two, edu providing education and investment acceleration. And in the in the end, it's uh, advisory. Uh, it's it's the same as consulting. You know, I one thing that I like about Cardano is um, everything about Cardano is business oriented. Mm -hmm. IOHK is a business company. Emergo is a business company. And when you when you have business related companies that are that are focused on business and focused on developing their solutions, it allows companies more room to succeed rather than just having people that are just passionate about a certain idea, but there's no business behind it because eventually you run out of money and that gets conflated. So it's about finding that right balance, the right balance of passion and business. Um, Rick, I think that was it for tap 21 X. So you have the following question. Yes, sir, will do. Okay, so we have the first point from Vigums on Reddit. 
says, hello, could you please announce the meetup we're having in New York City on the 13th at the D-Lab office? Yes, sir, we certainly can. So if you go to meetup.com and find New York City Cardano blockchain group events, you will find the meetup information for the New York City Cardano blockchain hosted by Jeff S. from the New York City Cardano blockchain group. Uh, so thank you for that. You can find all the details on the page. And the next from also from Vigams is uh, he says, hello, could you please ask Mr. Murasaki about the difference or, sorry, about the significance of the recent partnership with Y2X, which we touched on earlier in the program. How does Cardano fit into Y2X's business development strategy? Will it be the recommended platform for their clients who want to tokenize various commodities? And I think this has already been answered, but is there anything else to say about that, Mr. Murasaki? Um, again, uh, so for the details, I, it's, I think uh, the press release can explain better than I do. So uh, I, I would recommend to go onto our website and please check the announcement page. We have a very detailed press release about uh, what are we going to do with Y2X. So uh, please leave it to the press release. Thank you. So we have our last question from Mindful Trader, and it says, "Hi, Rick, Philippe, and Sebastian. I would like to have Mr. Murasaki opinion on my last, on my two latest videos, Tip Ada, and the voting system during large events such as live music concerts or sports games. And is it possible to spread one million Ada wallet into ten thousand smaller wallets? Bulk creation. Yeah. So I I can take that question." So there, there's kind of two parts to it. Uh, one is from just the purely technical side. Is it, is it even possible to do this? And the answer is yes. There's actually a tool by IOSK called Cardano CLI, and it allows for this kind of functionality. You can give it a script, and you can see what to do with wallets. You can tell create a thousand wallets and split up ADA. So that's technically doable. From Yodoi, we're always interested in integrating features to allow for easy payments easy access to financial systems and uh, this whole area. And so right now, obviously, we have the QR codes in Yoroi where you can scan QR codes with your uh, phone and then send ADA to it. Uh, but obviously, we're interested in expanding uh, the ways to to pay through Yoroi. And so we've looked at a few different options. And uh, just because we're so busy uh, trying to get the iOS app out there, along with getting a bunch of our other projects uh, done. We haven't had as much time as we'd like to to look into these, uh, but we have some technical documents we've already started creating about different payment solutions that we can try and include to make it easier to pay with ADA. So uh, definitely look for these in the future. Follow us on social media to follow development. And uh, we're always open to ideas on how to facilitate, facilitate payment through Yodoi. So if you have any ideas and you're a technical person, you can go to our GitHub repository, it's open source, and you can create a document outlining the technical proposal, how it works, how you'd implement the system. And once we have the bandwidth, we'll definitely look into it. All right, thank you, Sebastian. And uh, thank you for that from Mindful Trader. Get some good ideas out there. We very much appreciate that. All right, so we're coming near the end of the program. Is it about that time, Philippe? Because I've got two last uh, questions that we like to ask our guests that are kind of fun. So are we approaching that time? Yes, we're approaching that time. Okay, so the two questions, the first one is, uh, how did you come across Cardano? It's kind of like one of the earlier questions, but it's more on a personal level. Level, And the other one is, uh, what is the craziest thing you've ever seen in blockchain or at a blockchain conference or anything like that? So the first one is, um, how did you first learn about Cardano? Did you meet someone at a conference? Did you see it on TV? So how did you find out about Murasaki? Um, so I knew Cardano, I, I get, I got to know Cardano, uh, about four months ago, uh, before I joined Embargo. Uh, I invested in Bitcoin back in 2015. And, uh, uh although I was occupied with, uh, non cryptocurrency job, but I always, uh, had my passion for blockchain and cryptocurrency. So when I had a chance to meet uh, Mr. Kodama through my friend, uh, I before like before meeting Kodama, I I I, I studied about Cardano, 
and I read white paper. It was a quite long process for me to read everything and know every essence of what Cardano is. But basically, I knew uh, Cardano back in uh, April 2017. Uh, that was my first interaction with Cardano. So um, where did you, um, like, how did you meet uh, Mr. Kodama, like it was, you said it was through a mutual friend. How did that process go for like, go from you being passionate about cryptocurrency to you wanting a job or working at Emergo? What was that transition like? So back then, uh, Mr. Kodama was looking to have more employee, uh, specific, like specifically people speak English and who has experience in uh in southeast asia market and that was me and uh the process uh until i got into the company was i basically pitched myself pretty hard uh with my ability to speak english and also my passion for cryptocurrency and uh it took me a couple of meetings uh with kodama uh, but finally, I got a job, and uh, a week later, I was I was already in Tokyo. I, I I just moved from Osaka to Tokyo, so that I we I, I can be an initial member of Emago in Tokyo. That sounds great. And uh, what was our last question? What was the craziest thing you've ever seen in blockchain? I I think this is a very tough question. I think I I mean tough because uh, it's it's now it's getting more difficult for me to distinguish what's crazy as to what's not crazy because pretty much everything uh, seemed to be crazy for me at the first at the very beginning <laughs> but uh i i like to say the launch event that we had uh in sibuya uh when we when cardano launched settlement layer uh i think it was crazy in in a good sense because uh uh, I got to I got to meet uh, Charles Hoskinson. I got to meet Duncan, uh, and I got to meet all the IOHK's member, and just uh, their explanation about uh, Cardano and where the industry is going for was like was really mind blowing for me uh, because I, I was in this industry like uh, just a month, and I got information, I got an access to all those. Uh, great information and uh the experience and the uh thought who is in the uh in the front very front of uh, this cryptocurrency industry so that was uh, very crazy for me and also more for most of japanese people who attended the uh the launch event in sibuya uh after the event every reaction the reaction from everyone was uh so kadano is really going to make something and that moment i i thought everyone was actually seeing the future uh not because they understood or they initiated just because uh some leaders in this industry uh brief what's going to happen and what they're going to do in this industry and i think that the first one month's experience for me was really crazy <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. It sounds like a, and it's, it sounds like the perfect place for all that to happen. I mean, I think that um, I wanted to ask you a quick question. I guess it's kind of related because here in the States, I don't know, especially for me, no one knows what Cardano is near me. You know, it's, it's, it's hard enough finding someone who's interested in Bitcoin, but Cardano, it's, there's, there's no interest. I mean, no one knows. No one knows. How does that differ from the environment in Japan? Is it are there plenty of people that know about Cardano? Is it a lot more popular? Is it like you can just talk to some random person in the street and they know what cryptocurrency is or they know what Cardano is or is it like it's just a small niche of people that know what this is? I think the situation is a uh, a little bit different from the states and Japan uh, obviously because uh Cardano to Cardano, Japan is sort of like a motherland where the project started. So when compared to the States, I think uh, quite high percentage of people know about Cardano in Japan. 
but it's not like you talk to random people on the street and do you know do you know about Cardano and they know obviously they don't know about Cardano but I uh, I actually saw a couple people on the street who is wearing Cardano t-shirts uh, probably their community member but uh, I I witnessed uh, so far a couple people uh, on a random street who is wearing Cardano t-shirts so in in that sense I think Cardano is uh, popular and also have much recognition in Japan and you have more chance to talk to random people and the random people might know about Cardano I understand I understand you, you know that's pretty good Philippe can I add something to this of course uh, just just a little while ago Philippe and I talked about doing something called man on the street videos you remember that Philippe yes yes I do yes I do. okay so here's the idea behind man on the street videos is me or Philippe randomly would go out on the you know, just talk to people in public, like you see on YouTube videos. And as they walk by and say, um, hey, how you doing? Uh, we're advertising something, whatever, you know, so we don't look like we're up to criminal activity and say, <laughs> have you ever heard of digital currencies? Do you own any? And have you ever heard of Cardano? And, you know, if they answer the three questions and they're willing to go on YouTube, we would give them a Cardano paper wallet with like 10 ADA on it and say, hey, if you want to come on YouTube and talk to us, we'll we'll give you this paper wallet and it's your first digital currency. And it's really cool because it got the Minotaur, Urgh, you know, I, I think I think that would be kind of neat. We might get arrested. You know, I don't know. <laughs> be like, are you selling drugs out here or what? Because that's what <laughs> cryptocurrency is used for. <laughs> but anyway, if any of the viewers or listeners if you think it's a good idea, let us know in the comments down below, especially if you made it this far through the podcast. If you made it all the way to the end of the podcast, leave us some comments or give us some feedback. If you think we should do a man on the street video, please give us some ideas because I would like to do man on the street, but I don't want to get arrested. So, Philippe, I just wanted to throw that in there. I don't know, Murasaki, is that a good business marketing idea? It's <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think um – Whatever the way uh, we can promote Cardano uh, in a nice way, I think, yeah, we, we should try everything, I guess. <laughs> Without looking like a bunch of dorks. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can tell them, if you if you see them, you can tell them to download the Yoroi app on their phone and then send them data also. That's also that is another true. Video. That's oh, probably the better way to do it. I saw um, mm. Roger Ver doing that with Bitcoin Cash at conferences. Everyone had the Bitcoin Cash app, and he was just sending um, Bitcoin Cash to everyone. I think that's that that would be great. Save some paper and show the power of Yodoy. I think that's a win-win. Good idea, Sebastian. Maybe we can try that <laughs> instead. Hey, download this on your phone. They'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're wrapping up this episode. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Murasaki, for joining us on the podcast. It was an honor. We really appreciated you. And whenever you feel like you have something to announce or you just want to come back on the podcast, you are free. Um, you're always welcome on this podcast. We really appreciate you here. Um, our thanks go out to you. And we're going to give you the final word. You know, Mr. Murasaki, the floor is yours. And we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you again. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. I'm very uh, honored to be on this podcast. I think I'm the uh, first Japanese guy to be on this podcast. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, so to people who is watching this podcast, uh, my name is Shinsuke Murasaki once again. And I live in Japan, but uh, a week or two weeks out of one month, I'm in Asia specifically Malaysia or Indonesia. So if you have a great idea to work with Emago Kodano, please get in touch with me. Uh, my name, my email address is murasaki at imago.io. Thank you very much. Thank you, Murasaki. Bye, everyone. <laughs>